Captain Enrico Baroni, commander of the Espero, the pride of the Regia Marina, was bound for North Africa. With a top speed of 36 knots, this was one of the fastest ships in the Mediterranean and carried crucial supplies as the Italians faced a possible British invasion. Espero's first wartime mission was cut short by an ambush. Fast, powerful, and highly maneuverable, Captain Baroni's vessel was well equipped to fend off the attack and escape with the other two accompanying destroyers. But something went wrong, and to the shock of the Italian sailors, the ship was not moving fast enough. Espero was falling behind, and the British ships were quickly gaining on her. Staring down the barrel of a disaster, Baroni made a heart-wrenching decision. He pivoted Espero directly into the path of the oncoming British fleet. To get to the other destroyers, they would have to go through her. Italy emerged victorious from the First World War after defeating its 19th century enemy, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. This allowed the recently unified country to gain military dominance over the Adriatic and Mediterranean seas. At the same time, the costly war led to an unstable government and political turmoil seized by Benito Mussolini and his fascist movement to unite the nation into one nationalist banner. Mussolini, nicknamed the Duke, pursued his dream to make Italy a second Roman Empire, and the Italian navy, the Regia Marina, was the key to his territorial ambitions, especially regarding the Mare Nostrum, the name given by the Romans to their total dominion of the Mediterranean. Consequently, the Regia Marina began developing a new series of destroyers and other warships to establish its supremacy of the seas, quickly becoming the third most powerful navy in Europe after the United Kingdom and France. Some of the first destroyers built by the Italians were the Sauro and Sella class destroyers. They had a length of 90 meters, a beam of 9 meters, and a tonnage of 1,050 tons. Their offensive and defensive capabilities matched their size. The destroyers sported two twin 120mm guns, two single 40mm AA guns, two torpedo tubes, and two general-purpose machine guns. The Regia Marina developed four Sella and Sauro destroyers before moving forward with an improved design that was larger, heavier, and deadlier than both classes, the Turbine-class destroyer. The Turbine-class vessels were an improved version of the Sauro-class destroyers. Their aim was to make the ships considerably faster and resistant to direct hits. To achieve this, Italian engineers had to make the design larger to accommodate a more powerful and reliable propulsion system. With additional space, the turbine destroyers could carry more fuel oil and supplies, increasing the maximum range of operations compared to the previous models. The final turbine design had a length of 93 meters, a beam of 9.2 meters, a draft of 3 meters, and a displacement of over 1,700 tons under full load. The propulsion system comprised two Parsons-geared steam turbines driving one propeller shaft, moved by three Thornycroft boilers, providing 40,000 horsepower. Despite their size, turbine destroyers could reach a maximum speed of 36 knots under standard load and a maximum range of around 3,200 nautical miles at a speed of 14 knots. Armament was similar to the previous destroyer iterations, comprising a main battery of two twin 120mm Navy guns, two single 40mm AA guns, two triple 533mm torpedo tubes, four 13 2mm Breda Model 31 machine guns, and 52 mines. The crew consisted of 170 sailors and 12 officers. Eight turbine-class destroyers were built by the Regia Marina. All of them were launched in 1927, with the first being Aqualone and the last Zafiro. Espero, the third ship of the class, was laid down by Gio Ansaldo and Company at the Genoa Sestri Penente shipyard in 1925 and launched in August 1927. Upon her commission in 1928, Espero was assigned with her sister ships, Ostro, Borea, and Zafiro, to the first squadron of the first destroyer flotilla, based in La Spezia. Espero patrolled the waters of western Italy until she was dispatched to a special mission in the Far East. From the familiar waters of the Mediterranean, Espero would soon find herself cast at the other side of the world to protect Italy's interest in Asia. After decades of military and political tensions between Asia's two most powerful nations, the Empire of the Rising Sun decided to launch the invasion of Manchuria, northern China. Following the Mukden incident provoked by Japan to justify the occupation, 
Thousands of Imperial Japanese troops poured into Manchuria in September 1931 to seize the territory for the Emperor and establish a permanent military presence. The move made European nations shudder in concern for their colonial interest in the region, and Italy was no exception. The violent pacification ended during the last days of January 1932, resulting in the creation of the puppet state of Manchukuo. While the conflict occurred in the north, the Japanese provoked protests inside the Shanghai International Settlement, where Italy had a colonial presence. As the lives of Italian citizens became endangered by the escalating aggressions, Italy dispatched the San Marco Battalion to China to protect them and the colony. Aspero and her sister ship, Trento, were selected for the mission. They left port in February 1932 under the command of Admiral Domenico Cavagnari. Aspero and Trento reached Shanghai during the first week of March to negotiate with China and Japan to end the violent skirmishes that were destroying Shanghai. The truce was reached in May 1932, leading to Trento's withdrawal. Nevertheless, Espero remained in the South China Sea to reinforce the Italian naval squadron in the Far East, in case Japan resumed hostilities. In June 1940, when Italy declared war against France and the UK while the Third Reich invaded it from the east, Espero and three of her sister ships were part of the 2nd Destroyer Squadron based at the naval base of Taranto, ready to attack the French Navy and take over the Mediterranean. While already facing the French and juggling its African colonies, declaring war on Britain was Italy's bold and arguably reckless decision. The Regia Marina was at an abysmal naval disadvantage. Their fleet of only two modern battleships and 19 cruisers was no match for the combined might of the British and French Mediterranean fleets, with odds of 4 to 1 in tonnage against them. Mussolini was undeterred. He anticipated the swift fall of France to Germany and a subsequent plea for peace from Britain. He envisioned Italy claiming the Mediterranean's treasures. Yet the Royal Navy loomed large, and Italy's North African territories desperately needed supplies. In response to this pressing need, Mussolini sanctioned a high-stakes operation. Three of the fleet's turbine-class destroyers from the 2nd Destroyer Squadron were chosen to sprint from Taranto to Tobruk in Libya. Their pivotal mission was to transport the Blackshirt anti-tank units, fortifying defenses against a potential British armored onslaught. At the vanguard of this critical operation stood Captain Enrico Baroni aboard the flagship Espero, with destroyers Zafiro and Ostro at his flanks. Yet the Mediterranean was a hive of activity. The Mediterranean fleet was in the vicinity, safeguarding three Allied convoys bound for Egypt. On June 28, 1940, a vigilant British Sunderland from the 228th Squadron identified the Italian destroyers, positioned just 50 miles west of Zakynthos in the Ionian Sea. Without hesitation, the 7th Cruiser Squadron, including the capable cruisers Liverpool, Orion, Neptune, Gloucester, and Sydney, changed course to challenge the Italians. By the evening's descent, at 6.30 p.m., the Liverpool was locked onto a sparrow, with Tobruk just 120 miles away. The Italian destroyers, chosen for their blistering speed, now faced insurmountable odds. The vessel's age, the heft of their cargo, and the unforgiving sea began to betray them. The Liverpool closed the gap and unleashed its firepower, forcing the bewildered Italian crews into manning their posts for the first significant surface engagement between Italian and Allied warships during World War II. The sea churned with tension, the pursuit growing more intense as the Italians grappled with disbelief. Their swift ships were being outpaced by what were supposed to be slower adversaries. The weight of their cargo was a setback, but the real shock came when Captain Baroni learned that a Sparrow's third boiler was malfunctioning. This critical flaw slashed their speed to a mere 25 knots. Faced with grim prospects, Captain Baroni made a painful decision, sacrifice a Sparrow. Drawing the British warship's attention solely to his flagship would afford the other destroyers a window of escape. He pivoted towards his destiny, maneuvering a Sparrow to divert and confront the British head-on. Laying smoke screens, dodging incoming fire, and brazenly launching torpedoes at Orion. The scene was shocking. The thick, black smoke screen played its role perfectly, masking Ostro and Zafiro from British eyes. Amidst this obscurity, the evident target was the defiant Espero. While Espero grappled with Liverpool and Gloucester, the remaining British cruisers sought to flank the smoke screen. However, 
the allure of downing a state-of-the-art Italian vessel was irresistible for the British commanders, and they ordered a change of plans. They converged their attention back on a sparrow, seeking its destruction. Navigating with grit and mastery, Baroni piloted a sparrow in daring zigzags, evading British shells for what seemed like an eternity. However, the Italians struck first, landing a shell on the Liverpool, a near-fatal blow just above the waterline. But as the minutes drew on, the inevitable happened. By 8 p.m., a devastating hit crippled the Sparrow's engine rooms. Its nimble, evasive dance came to a screeching halt, turning it into a stationary target. The British 7th Squadron encircled the vulnerable Sparrow, bringing their entire arsenal to bear. Yet, the Italian spirit was indomitable. They returned fire, stalling and fighting, drawing out every precious second to ensure the safety of their fellow destroyers. The onslaught was staggering. The British unleashed over 5,000 shots, obliterating the Italian destroyer after a harrowing 130 minutes. Yet, amidst the chaos, Sydney managed to rescue 47 Italians. Tragically, many who tried to flee on rafts met with grim fates, with only six survivors being located by the Italian submarine Topazio nearly three weeks later. Captain Baroni, the commander of this fierce resistance, met his end on a sparrow. In recognition of his unparalleled valor, he was posthumously honored with the Medaglia d'Oro al Valor Militare. The sacrifice of Espero became a symbol of bravery and self-sacrifice amidst the broader narrative of Regia Marina's setbacks. Tales of Captain Baroni's end became a topic of heated discussion. Some spoke of an explosive end, others whispered that the courageous captain, having survived the initial explosion, chose a mariner's death going down with his beloved ship. What was undeniable was the intense battle's repercussions on British supplies. The onslaught against a sparrow not only unveiled the vulnerabilities of daytime naval confrontations at extended ranges, but also underscored a pressing ammunition crisis in Alexandria. The battle's aftershock reverberated in strategic decisions. The sheer volume of ammunition expended in downing a sparrow precipitated several shortages, compelling the 2nd Cruiser Division to retreat to Alexandria and causing a postponement in Malta convoys. In regards to the Italian efforts, analysts have concluded that a better synergy between Italian aircraft and naval vessels would have potentially allowed the destroyers to sidestep the Allied cruisers entirely. However, the Italian strategic doctrine chose a segregated approach. The Regia Aeronautica, with its adherence to independent air operations, often overlooked the naval requirements of the Regia Marina. This disjointed coordination or a heavy cost throughout the war, as highlighted by a sparrow's last stand. <laughs>